What we're talking about right now goes right to the core of our survival of our society, to the survival of our communities, our young children. We're living in a world that's changing in ways that we've never seen, that we're not conditioned to accept. And the world is changing faster than we have been conditioned to accept in a single generation. We are trying to solve the problems of the world through a thinking based on false assumptions of obsolete science, such as Darwin's ideas that nature is based upon competition and conflict. So for 150 years, because that was believed to be the theme of nature, it made sense to try to incorporate that theme in our personal lives, in relationships, consciously and subconsciously. I'm not seeing everyone does this consciously, but between nations, uh, in communities and in society, we now know the best science of the modern world tells us that nature, nature's primary rule is cooperation. When we see so much competition, that tells us how far we've strayed. We're seeing the rise of hate in ways that we've never seen. We're seeing the rise of hate based upon religion, color of our skin, sexual orientation, hate crimes, and polarization, men against women, Christian against Muslim. And it's not just in the Western countries. You're seeing this all over the world. And it stems, as, as different as these things are from one another, they're only possible, Brian, because of the way we've been taught to think. Mm. It's not natural for humans. Young babies, studies have been done, babies do not hate, they don't even distinguish color between uh, their race and other races. White babies, black babies, brown babies, Asian, Native American, they don't know the difference until their parents tell them that difference is there. I think about this often. What would it be like to raise an entire generation of young people based upon what we now know to be true in science rather than these false assumptions? We've asked science to tell us who we are and science is doing a really good job. And the question is, are we willing to embrace the story that science is telling us? There is a philosophy now in the scientific community that consciousness informs itself through its creations. So if, if you think about that, what we see as movies for entertainment, art, sculpture, music, uh, books, uh, all of the things that, that we create, that we think we're doing to entertain ourselves, from this perspective, consciousness is asking us in the field to create these things to remind us of our deepest potentials. And if you think about that, you look at, look at the blockbuster movies that surprised even, even the, you know, the movie makers that have had the greatest impact. And as different as they are from one another, there are common themes. So for example, The Matrix obviously comes to mind. That was about a, a world that we cannot see that influences us tremendously. Yeah, who, no, I, who sits down to write The Matrix? Where does that idea even yeah. come from? Avatar came along yeah. after that. Inception, they are mirroring back to us what we are asking of ourselves. We're asking ourselves to remember ourselves, yeah. to remember who we are and our potential. And one of the ways that we're doing it, rather than going to a monastery, leaving your family and your life behind and living on a mountain you know, for the rest of your life, which you can do and it can be fun, we're asking consciousness through our expressions of creation, not just for fun or entertainment, but to tell us what it is that we have forgotten about ourselves.